After a series of failures and employee reports, it has become apparent that Jeff Bezos's rocket company, Blue Origin, has a dark side that is standing in the way of its growth. While companies like SpaceX have dominated the skies, Blue Origin is nowhere in sight. But why is that so? Why is a company funded by one of the richest men on the planet unable to perform as expected? Let's take a closer look. Blue Origin and SpaceX are two companies at the forefront of space exploration. They were started around the same time by two successful men, and both have similar goals. However, while Blue Origin talks a lot about its plans, they haven't accomplished much so far. But things may change in 2024 when they unveil their first orbital rocket called the New Glenn. Or will they? Blue Origin has been working on the New Glenn since 2012. The rocket's design was revealed by Jeff Bezos in 2016, and it's truly impressive. It features a huge rocket design with a reusable booster core, which was something new and exciting at the time. Bezos made the announcement just before Elon Musk revealed his concept for the interplanetary transport system, which later became known as the Starship. But here's the interesting part. New Glenn is not just a replica of the ITS or Starship. While it may have a futuristic appearance like them, its functionality is actually more grounded in traditional rocketry. In simple terms, it does a similar job to SpaceX's Falcon 9, but on a larger scale with greater power. At the core of this impressive booster are seven brand new B-4 engines. Together, these engines generate a mind-boggling 3.85 million pounds of thrust by burning a combination of liquid methane and liquid oxygen fuel. That's a tremendous amount of power. According to Blue Origin, this power allows New Glenn to carry up to 45 metric tons of payload to low Earth orbit. In comparison, the Starship, which uses the methane-burning SpaceX Raptor 2 engine, offers slightly less thrust at 230 metric tons. However, the BE-4 engine is significantly larger than the Raptor, giving it an edge with 250 metric tons of thrust. So, it's a trade-off between size and power between the two engines. Blue Origin refers to the BE-4 engine as a medium-performance version of a high-performance architecture. Essentially, they mean that the engine is designed to be stronger and more robust than what is actually required for its intended purpose. The company doesn't plan to push the engine to its absolute limits unlike SpaceX with its Raptor engine. One notable difference is that the BE-4 operates at a much lower chamber pressure compared to the Raptor. This lower pressure is expected to provide a more consistent and reliable engine performance. In contrast, during the initial launch of the Starship, 8 out of the 33 Raptors experienced failures, which highlights the challenges faced by SpaceX. By adopting a more conservative approach with the BE-4, Blue Origin aims to prioritize reliability and consistency in engine performance. They are focused on ensuring that their engine functions smoothly and consistently, which ultimately contributes to a more dependable and successful rocket launch. While Blue Origin may have the right idea here, the BE-4 has consistently failed to perform as expected. Unreliable engine Blue Origin had the good fortune of persuading United Launch Alliance, ULA, to adopt the B-4 engine for the core stage of their new Vulcan Centaur rocket. Unlike New Glenn, the Vulcan Centaur design is more advanced and developed. In theory, ULA LA's Vulcan should have conducted flight tests of the BE-4 engine well before New Glenn's debut. However, the unfortunate reality is that a series of delays and technical challenges have hindered the progress of the Vulcan Centaur rocket. Some of these difficulties can be attributed to issues with the BE-4 engine itself. These setbacks have prevented ULA from launching the Vulcan Centaur as planned. They have had to address and overcome various obstacles associated with the engine, causing delays in the testing and eventual deployment of the rocket. Several factors have contributed to the delays, and it seems that Jeff Bezos and his team bear some responsibility. There have been instances where Bezos was reportedly focused on other ventures, which could have impacted the progress of Blue Origin. Furthermore, the global COVID-19 pandemic has also played a part in causing delays across the aerospace industry. One major challenge has been the limited availability of hardware for the BE-4 engine testing and development program. Blue Origin's engine factory in Washington has not had a sufficient supply of components to build the developmental engines, resulting in prolonged periods without testing. This scarcity of essential hardware has undoubtedly hampered the progress of the engine's development. It is surprising to learn that Blue Origin's development program, which was claimed to be hardware-rich in the spring of 2017, did not progress as expected. The shift in focus became apparent after Bob Smith assumed the role of CEO in late 2017. Rather than prioritizing hardware development, the emphasis seemed to have shifted towards reorganizing the the 
leadership structure within Blue Origin. This realignment, coupled with increased attention given to other programs, resulted in the B-4 engine not receiving the necessary resources and freedom to advance at its full potential. Although the BE-4 engines underwent testing at Blue Origin's facilities, they had yet to be test-fired while attached to the rocket, which is a crucial step in the qualification process. Additionally, it is concerning to note that in order to meet delivery deadlines, Blue Origin took the somewhat risky approach of delivering engines to its customers before completing full qualification testing. In a recent development, ULA had to cancel a planned flight readiness test due to the discovery of problems with the booster engine. Specifically, there were concerns related to the engine's power output, prompting the need for a closer examination. Tori Bruno, the CEO of ULA, acknowledged the issues and outlined the steps taken to address them. Adjustments were made, including modifications to the ground hydraulic pressure, changes in the rate of liquid oxygen addition, and alterations to the flow of purge and chill gas to the engine igniters. Regrettably, the recent issue encountered during Vulcan's testing is not the sole obstacle the rocket has faced. Vulcan utilizes a mixture of liquid natural gas, LNG, and liquid oxygen, LOX, as propellants. During a tanking test conducted on the launch pad, the teams identified a problem related to passing propellants through an igniter in one of the BE-4 engines. To address this issue, the rocket was rolled back to the vertical integration facility where the necessary adjustments could be made. The teams worked on modifying specific parameters to ensure a dependable flight readiness firing, a critical step in the testing process. These issues mark a consistent pattern of problems with the BE-4 engine that blew origin has yet to address. But why is a company that is expected to be one of the leaders of spaceflight struggling to perform as expected? The answer may lie in a report published in 2019 that blames a toxic work environment as one of the main reasons for the problems at Blue Origin. In 2019, an employee at Blue Origin, a company founded by Jeff Bezos, became disillusioned with the organization and decided to leave. Before departing, the employee wrote a comprehensive memo expressing concerns about the company's culture and sent it to Bezos and other senior leaders. The memo boldly stated that the existing culture at Blue Origin was detrimental to its success and was progressively impacting the entire company. This memo was not an isolated incident, but rather one of several warnings that had been given to Blue Origin's leadership in recent years. These warnings highlighted the dysfunctional nature of the company's culture, which resulted in low morale among employees and a high turnover rate. Furthermore, this toxic culture had significant repercussions, causing significant delays in several major programs, such as the development of the New Glenn rocket and the BE-4 engine. The problems identified within Blue Origin were described as systemic, indicating that they had become deeply ingrained within the organization. Under the new management, Blue Origin's culture was described by former employees as having an authoritarian bro culture. This culture not only affected decision-making, but also permeated throughout the entire organization. It resulted resulted in condescending and sometimes humiliating comments, as well as instances of harassment towards some women. Additionally, a stagnant top-down hierarchy frustrated many employees. As Blue Origin experienced rapid growth, transitioning from a small startup to a large corporation with nearly 4,000 employees, the company grappled with improving its culture. In 2019, following complaints of sexism, the head of recruiting was fired. Similar to many aerospace companies, Blue Origin struggled with a male-dominated culture. Several current and former female employees reported facing condescending remarks and comments about their appearance. These experiences shed light on the challenges faced by women in such work environments. It is clear that Blue Origin has a lot of work to do before it can hope to compete with companies like SpaceX. Do you think Blue Origin can bounce back? Or do you think the company needs to be completely rebooted? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.